This episode of the Old Dogs REI Network is brought to you by Mino Studio. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where cash flow is king. Real estate investing, the means, so you can enjoy your retirement dreams. This is the show where we cut right to the chase. No sales pitch, no long monologues, just simple how-to real estate investing advice. So you can earn the passive income you need to enjoy your retirement today. And now, your host and chief old dog, Bill Manasero. Hello, old dogs, and welcome to Fun Facts Friday. This is our once a week, only on Friday show, where we have special episodes not featuring guests, where I will share tricks, tips, terminology, and techniques that will help skyrocket you to real estate investing success. Today's topic is virus update and price to rent ratio and why it's important. But before we get started, I just want to touch base with you guys as I always do on Fridays, just check in. Boy, oh boy, I know uh, it has been a brutal, brutal last uh, couple of weeks and going on to a month here. Difficult time for, for many of you, and I understand uh, it is, uh, it's rough, and, it, and it's tough to talk even real estate at, at this time, but um, that we also, if we're involved in it, we're, we can't, it's kind of hard to avoid at the same time, but I, I do hope that you're uh, at least taking advantage of this time um, in, a, in a good way uh, in that uh, you're spending some good family time together. Hopefully you're staying in contact with the older friends that uh, you can contact and family, you know, just a phone call, a, a FaceTime uh, um, exchange, just uh, you're know, trying to comfort those that uh, are in a little higher risk area or maybe even sick and ill. So, um, I'm just, I just hope that, uh, you guys are, are doing all right. As I mentioned before, you're all in my prayers and, and I really hope that we, we all get through this, uh, with as few scars as possible. I uh, just uh, wanted to do a few quick updates, uh, just regarding virus related info, um, uh, just a couple of quick things. Uh, if you are buying or selling, I know that a lot of deals are falling through. I think I'd mentioned last Friday about one that uh, was, uh, we'd already signed uh, the contract, but uh, the person had to drop out. Uh, and I think it was concerns about you know, the effects on the economy and, and it was a first time buyer too. So it was a, it was a tough situation. So I, I didn't have a problem, uh, releasing, uh, the earnest money and, and, uh, and letting that one go. Um, what's really interesting is there are dynamics. I am getting, there's a lot of activity in the buying and selling arena. A lot of people know that these deals are falling through. So other people are popping up saying, Hey, if that fell through, I've got cash and I'm ready to buy. So, uh, so that it's already starting, uh, in terms of the, the same dynamics uh, that happened in the last recession where you have people that are looking at the uh, opportunities out there too. So, uh, it may be tough to get top dollar um, because it may, you know, it again, it's hard to say, but I think a lot of people are looking for bargains uh, out there right now. Uh, just a couple of notes to those of you that are Airbnbers. Uh, you probably already know about this, but there's a message from Brian Chesky, uh, the founder of one of the founders of Airbnb. And uh, he actually made an appeal to his hosts. He actually he even said uh, he apologized that he wasn't doing a good job communicating with the uh, the hosts. And I think a lot of us that are hosts were feeling that he has actually allocated $250 million to uh, helping those that uh, had to do mandatory refunds. I mean, we didn't have a choice if they made the booking before um, March 14th uh, and they wanted to get out of it. Uh, they, you know, the folks did. And, and in most cases, you know, they wrote to us directly, or at least wrote to me directly. And, and I understood their situation. They were coming to a conference or an event that wasn't going to be held and it didn't make any sense for them to come. And uh, I didn't have a problem releasing the funds, but, you know, definitely took a bite. And, um, I think that, uh, you know, 
Brian's uh, announcement, which uh, I'll have a link to. Hopefully you guys can click onto it. I know it was meant for hosts, but I, I think you can click through to it. And uh, he is going to pay uh, 25% uh, uh, of whatever that refund was. That's part of what that $250 million is allocated for. Um, they also have a $10 million super host relief fund that uh, will also go to assist with those that are super hosts that really got uh, hit hard. I, I've only got three units. It's not a, a huge thing for me, but I know that uh, those, including some of the guests I've had on who have hundreds and hundreds of Airbnb units were hit really hard. Also, they're allowing for guest donations. It's what's really cool with Airbnb is you really do develop a relationship with a lot of your guests, even though you may not even meet them in person in reality. But um, there are guests that have inquired about making donations to help out uh, some of the hosts. And uh, so they have set up a uh, a way to do that for guests, uh, which is uh, another way to help out. Apparently, there was a, a petition made uh, to those that were putting the stimulus bill together to allow Airbnb host to, to fall into the guidelines for those uh, businesses that are getting assistance through SBA grants, loans, and even unemployment. So uh, that uh, that's also a resource for those. So if any of you are listening uh, that are in Airbnb did get hit, uh, there are some some avenues at least to get uh, you know, recoup some of it i dropped my rents radically um i've been aggressively trying to uh, market and do all kinds of promotions uh, to get some uh, those spaces filled and it's helped and it really does work but uh you know it's you know i'm just to break even in some in some regards so it's not necessarily real profitable but it, i'm replacing zero money with a neat, a, at least enough money to meet uh, expenses which is good just you know i mentioned about evictions and that uh that for the most part evict you know uh, people uh there will be no evictions filed now uh, I, I probably stepped out a little bit that was being recommended to the city state local governments and so there are different regs depending on the the area so you may be in an area where they uh, are not uh, putting a, a little hold on evictions. And if that's the case, well, you know, then my correction there is my error. But uh, most of the areas that I've heard about uh, have some sort of uh, eviction waiver going on during uh, the the lockdowns or the uh, these uh, times of quarantine and so forth. So also I had mentioned about forbearance and that uh, seems to have stirring up a lot of interest and in, uh, forbearance being for those that have mortgages that uh, want to get temporary relief. Uh, there are different banks doing different things in that area as well. Uh, there's not a, a strong mandate as to what the banks uh, um, can do so some of them um, and the banks that at least that have my loans are basically saying yeah we'll we'll let you go ahead and uh, defer the payment uh, for three months and after three months they'll assess whether you can go any further with it but generally they're looking for payment uh, at that time for those three months plus the month that is due so yeah, you know, right now I'm just doing all I can just to make those payments so that I don't have to, um, you know, end up with this huge bill. And I, and I know that some of them will work with you and come up with a payment schedule. I just don't want the headache if I don't have to do it. But there are others. I think Wells Fargo is one that will actually give you the forbearance for three months and then add that time to the end of the loan. So uh, you don't have to pay it at the end of the three months. So it just really depends on the bank. And you might want to contact your bank. You may have, I think that's a sweet deal, um, a lot better than what uh, my uh, mortgage companies are doing. So anyway, um, those are just a, just a quick update there for you. Um, what I'm talking about today is uh, price to rent ratio and why it's important, okay? As we are learning to cope with new life in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, things such as social distancing, face masks, obsessively washing our hands, and learning to work from home 
are our new reality. Um, but there are those of us who are real estate investors who are also dealing with a host of other challenging issues, unemployed tenants, eviction bans, covering our mortgage payments, property taxes, and insurance, and a host of other regular operational expenses such as maintenance and repairs, utilities, lawn care, and so forth. The challenges are pretty big depending on, on how active you are in uh, rental property management. And then there's sort of the inevitable, you know, a lot of us have created various mechanisms to create deal flow and the deal flow pipeline that, you know, keeps bringing you these good deals and hopefully you'll get those that meet your criteria. Um, well, with a lot of these things happening, uh, some of their deal flow mechanisms here or mechanics are, are just either have slowed down or just stopped outright and and that's that's a little bit of a challenge too it's it's trying to stay on those key markets to see if there are any local shifts occurring that we should know about economically that might impact our investing in those areas um, so our analysis and underwriting needs really at this time should include factors that really measure those the market's likelihood, the markets that you've sort of targeted uh, for growth and for short for both the short and the long term. Certain areas of the country have been hit harder than others. Uh, those that are heavy tourist, travel, vacation, conference, and sporting venues, uh, you know, in that particular area have been hit the hardest, and they may have a slower recovery. So we need to really sort of go back to Rental Property Analysis 101 and look at where local markets are most susceptible. So if you have one of these areas where it has a lot of folks that that feed the industries, like I mentioned, travel or uh, conferences, sporting events, um, those folks may have just been laid off flat and th those businesses may come back slowly uh, or, uh, or, or there may be a big surge, you know, that they might just jump right back on. A lot depends on just how long the virus will, will permeate our lives here. The real estate investing business, uh, as you know, it has a lot of terminology and there's a lot of factors when we start getting into analysis. Um, and I think one of the most important terms at this point in time, especially for investors in traditional rental properties, is the price to rent ratio. And uh, the price to rent ratio is the ratio of home prices to annualized rent in a given location. And it's used as a benchmark for estimating whether it's cheaper to rent or own property. If property values plummet in an area, it may make more sense for people to buy other than rent. So this is a key factor for us and something we need to take a, a look at. Uh, again, if we have massive unemployment in, in key areas and other economic uh, downturns in on a regional basis. While this real estate concept is relatively easy to understand and calculate, it's a crucial factor in determining rental demand, rental income, and return on investment for long-term investment properties for sale. That's why I put this podcast together. Another reason for that, too, is I've never really done a podcast on the price-to-rent ratio, so I think that this will be helpful. We have lots on cap rate and ROI and cash on cash and so forth, but uh, this is the first, the first one time I've done this. Surprisingly, we haven't done it before. This will hopefully answer most of the questions you may have about price to rent ratio and its use in real estate investments. What is price to rent ratio? I, I gave a quick definition there, but the price to rent ratio is a real estate term which is useful for both real estate investors, uh, landlords, and renters, which are tenants, right? In simple words, this metric calculates the ratio between the average price per uh, property price in a given housing market and the average annual rental rate there. Okay. From a common person's point of view, this measure compares whether renting a property or buying a property, what costs more relatively speaking. Thus the ratio helps individuals make an informed decision on the old dilemma rent versus buy. Now, those of us that buy in areas that are very inexpensive, like Indianapolis, uh, you know, places like Ohio and, and Tennessee, Memphis, um, you know, homes are so cheap there that you can buy a home, get a mortgage on it, and that mortgage will be less 
than uh, the rent would be for that area. And that's that's an important factor there because if a person can qualify and maybe even get a FHA loan at 3% down, you know, they can get into a home for a couple thousand dollars. And uh, that pretty well would, would make it difficult, I think, for you as a landlord to be able to find rental properties in those kinds of areas. In the case of real estate investors, the situation is a, a little bit more complicated. The price to rent ratio affects demand for long-term rental properties in any U.S. housing markets. This means that it has a direct effect on the return on investment to be expected in a location in terms of both traditional cash-on-cash return and traditional cap rate, which are the two main factors a lot of investors use. We'll come back to that issue on how investors and landlords can make the best use of this real estate concept in a bit. So first off, let's look at how to calculate price to rent ratio. To get a full understanding of this uh, real estate investing concept, here's the price to rent ratio formula. Okay, there's sort of two different approaches here. Um, One, you can measure price to rent ratio by dividing the average property price by the average annual rent. So it's the the price of the property minus the annual rent. Uh, average annual rent. Or some people do it this way, well, they'll take the average property price, divide it by the average monthly rent times 12. Okay, so whatever number you get out of that average property price divided by average rent monthly rent, and then you multiply that by 12. Okay, so as most people learn best through a hands-on experience, let's take a look at an example. So let's take, for example, Houston, Texas. Houston housing market figures for 2020, the average property price is $395,169. Average monthly rental price is $1,825. So if we do the math here, okay, uh, $395,169 divided by $1,825, $1,825 times 12, you get 18 Okay. Now, while the formula for calculating the price to rent ratio is simple and straightforward, it requires a significant amount of real estate data. You will need to be able to find reliable figures that can give you the average property price and the average monthly rent. Um, There's a great tool at mashvisor.com, and I'll have a link to it. It does... uh, you know, it does cost to use their tools and to join their their service, but uh, it's got great information, great uh, a lot of great tools, and just some great content that's available for you too. So, um, they you know they can get in there and they can give you the um, you know the even at the neighborhood level a good idea of what those averages are, and uh, you know that 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 does save a lot of time. But you can also get them on, there are other online uh, sites where you can get that information, and sometimes you can just do a search. You can just say, um, you know, Houston uh, average property price, and it'll give you a, a pretty close, you know, pretty close idea. Uh, it won't do this necessarily neighborhood by neighborhood, but it does uh, give you a pretty good round idea that you can, you know, at least calculate from a general sense and then dig deeper. So how do we use that ratio? Okay, so now that you kind of know what the metric is and how to calculate it on our, on your own, you might be wondering of what use it is to you as a real estate investor. In other words, how can I use the price to rent ratio in my real estate investing decisions? So actually, the answer to that question is not straightforward. To begin with, the price to rent ratio is generally divided into three categories. Okay, high, moderate, and low. Okay, so high would be numbers, you know, again, we you know, you saw how I got 18 out of Houston. Okay, so high would be 21 or above. Moderate would be 16 to 20, which is where the Houston number came in. And low, 15 or below. Now, let's see what each of these ranges, ranges means for both renters and real estate investors. Okay, the high price to rent ratio. In such a market, homes are too expensive compared to monthly rent, so the vast majority of people decide to rent rather than buy. This should be good news for investors as it translates into strong demand for long-term rental properties like California. (laughs) That's key. You know, the prices are way too expensive for most people, so renting, there's a strong demand for renting. But, okay, you got to also consider the fact that as an investor, you're buying these properties too. So they're really expensive. And then the rents, you know, I mean, 
give you very, you know, the rents are, are high too. So, but not high enough that, you know, that you can get a good spread there and, you know, trying to get a decent cap rate in Southern California is really, really difficult. So that, that kind of makes it tough to invest in that high market. Although generalization should be avoided in the real estate investing business, markets with moderate price to rent ratios tend to be optimal for the traditional rental strategy. First of all, property prices are usually high enough to drive many people to choose to rent versus buy, but simultaneously, the traditional rental income is not low enough to prevent landlords from achieving a high rate of return on a rental property. Of course, before deciding to buy an investment property in such a location, a smart investor needs to conduct diligent real estate market analysis as well as investment property analysis on traditional rental properties for sale within his or her budget. This is really key. So this is a factor you need to do, but you, you kind of know what that market's doing. And if that market, like I had mentioned earlier, it was a heavy service market where a lot of people are employed, unemployed, you need to be cautious and you need to see what's what the plans are for changing that. Now, it could be at a low point, and this might be a place where you can get some good deals on houses. And as uh, the city ramps up to you know, hire everybody back or boost those industries again, then you might see some, some good things happening. And then there's the low price to rent ratio. And the risk in this area is focusing your real estate energy on a market with a price to rent ratio below 15, okay, which is the low price uh, rent ratio. Uh, price to rent ratio is that it's relatively difficult to find tenants. Okay. So people in such markets prefer to buy versus rent because home values are low compared to rental rates. These markets offer excellent real estate investment opportunities for those that are marketing experts. Okay. Who can create outstanding rental listings and attract tenants even amid a low rental demand. But generally you have a lot of C properties, C minus properties in this kind of a marketplace and there are risks associated with it, and it's sometimes difficult to get long-term tenants. You can get them, but it can still be really difficult. So just in summary here, while you know this ratio is definitely one indicator which investors in traditional rental properties should consider, it does not suffice to make an informed decision on its own, okay? So you really need to look at other factors. You need to perform a more detailed rental market analysis in and with this uh, price to rent ratio. Uh, even though calculating price to rent ratio by city is absolutely doable for as many U.S. housing markets as you'd wish to do it, it is a rather time consuming and, and tedious. And that's why um, I, I put together here just as a reference for you uh, a, a list of those in the sort of the top cities in that moderate range we we're talking about and uh, the categories. And I'll have the table uh, in the show notes, but you know the categories will be the city and then the price to rent ratio and then average price property price, average monthly rent, average traditional cash on cash return. So those will be sort of the main factors. You know, I'll just kind of read the list through. I'm not going to give you all the numbers in each category. You can check that out if you're interested. But those uh, those cities include Tampa, Florida, Chicago, Illinois, uh, Dallas, Texas, Atlanta, Georgia, Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Houston, Texas, Orlando, Pennsylvania, uh, Palm Springs, California, uh, Columbus, Ohio, and San Antonio, Texas. So the these are the those you know good good areas that, that that fall into that moderate. Now again, you've got to look at the other market factors there to see if they make sense for you. You know, Dallas, Texas, uh, of course, it's been hot. It's been on the top of the list for a while, but those rental prices are coming up and so are the uh, the property prices. So it, it just it just depends. There are a lot of factors that you have to look at. And you also have to look at income levels, too. What What's the average income in an area? That's part of studying the, the market itself. So the price to rent ratio is one of the metrics a real estate investor must look at when buying a traditional rental property. However, it's not the only one. Investing in positive cash flow properties with a high profitability requires comprehensive real estate analysis at both the neighborhood and the property level. To start searching for profitable investment properties for sale, whether MLS listings 
or off-market properties in markets with high and moderate or low price to rent ratio today, you just need to do your homework. And it's like we've said in, in many, many other episodes. You know, you've got to do your homework, brush up your analysis skills, and uh, really, really get out there and start uh, start running some numbers and uh, you know check on those markets that you've already targeted. Maybe there are some new markets that look more appealing, and uh, I think you'll see that there might be might be some good uh, good new markets on the horizon. Well, that's it for the day. Please note, Old Dog listeners, everything presented here can be accessed in our show notes on the Old Dogs website at olddogsreinetwork.com forward slash blog. And you're going to look for the episode on price to rent ratio. So until next time, man, oh man, you guys uh, know you are in our prayers and also that uh, cash flow is king, real estate investing, the means, yep. But be safe, healthy, stay indoors. And this thing uh, will pass. We're all going to be okay here. So thanks again for listening. And may God bless you. Thank you very much for visiting the Old Dogs REI Network. We would greatly appreciate if you would stop by iTunes and let us know what you think of the show. We would love if you could subscribe to the podcast, give us a five-star rating, and write a review. The more ratings and reviews we receive, the more visible the podcast will be to others. Thank you.